good afternoon. In the last lecture, we touched upon the safety analysis, the safety approach. We talked about the deterministic approach and how do we go about identifying the different events and do how do we do a deterministic analysis. In this lecture, I would give you some ideas about the probabilistic safety analysis or sometimes also called as the risk safety analysis. Now, what is risk? Risk can be defined as a perceived danger, could be a perceived injury or something of some negative consequence that is risk. So, in another word you can say it is an unrealized potential for harming that is risk, but if suppose the danger is actually there then there is no <laughs> question of risk it is actually when it happens injury or death anything can happen. Now, but we need to quantify the likelihood, the chance. So, we tell or we define risk as a frequency with which a given consequences could happen. So, that is what we give risk. With reference to risk, I can give a very simplest example traveling on the footboard of a bus most of our buses are crowded and in the busy office time you don't get space you have to hang on yes now what sort of risk you are hanging maybe your hand grip might get loose you might fall down or you might be hit by another bus because your body is protruding away outside the thing. So, there are, but it does not mean that okay, you are going to really, it is going to really happen, it can happen. So, what is the probability of this? Now, coming to the nuclear reactors about which our whole subject of the talks in these different lectures are going to be, we have to how do we say what risk of what? Risk of damaging the core, but why what happens if the core is damaged? If the core is damaged, the fuel, then the fission products which are already because of the fissions which have already occurred all will come out. So, we measure the core damage frequency. So, what is that? the probability per year of reactor operation or we say probability per reactor year of experiencing a, experiencing a core damage accident. So, in the terminology of the probabilistic safety analysis this is called as level 1 which is most important that the core damage can happen. What is the frequency with which the core damage can happen? Because only once you know that then you have to start thinking about what will happen after that what is going to happen what are the consequences of that. Now, having the core having been damaged next is these fission products can come to the containment or to the other environment. So, the other measure is how much of this fission product will come to the atmosphere? 
what is the probability what is the chance so that is we have the next level so that comes under the psa level 2 so basically here we will be worried about the fission products iodine and cesium so this is the level just going back the amount of fission products will be proportional to the power and the integral power dt that is what will be the cumulative operation. So, more this will be more if it is less. So, you take a smaller reactor the, the probabilities or the quantities will be come down probabilities may remain similar. Now, the some amount of fuel has come out of the core not all may come and some has got released to the public, but it may not have total impact only some impact it may have and how do we measure this risk. So, impact on the public for example, let us say how many deaths happened after the Fukushima accident, how many cancers happened after the Fukushima accidents. So, they could be measured as frequency of death annual frequency of death or annual frequencies of cancer and this we call as the PSA level 3. Now, this probabilistic safety analysis per se even though does not mean compulsory in all countries nevertheless it has become an accepted practice to have probabilistic safety analysis and the deterministic safety analysis and at least the first level of PSA we are able to do and in the following parts of this lecture we will see what we can get out of PSA. This PSA means you have to know how the scenarios can develop. So, if the you have to develop the scenarios in this process you must know how each and every component is going to operate and in which way each component can fail. So, this really gives you a good uh, insight you are you can have to have an insight into the whole plant to do the PSA. Then always we have to compare the risk probability with the risk which we can take. So, this is the next step. So, basically PSA has made people realize that a set of sequences may happen or may not, but well beforehand it tells you that with this sort of a design this can happen. So, that sort of a uh, uh, what you call input we get in the design. So, uh, we cannot say oh some portion we have missed or forgotten in the analysis you have to know the total plant. So, it is a very useful 
tool. So, it really gives a general vision of the plant from the safety point of view and highlights the weak points. For example, let us say there are two different approaches of providing safety. Let us look at a boiler feed pump. In order that the boiler feed pump in case it fails still the flow to the react to the steam generator must be or the boiler must be ensured. I could have different approaches. I could have 200 percent pumps one in operation, one as a standby, as a redundant approach. I could have both being electrically driven or I could have one turbo driven and one electrical driven or I could go for a 3 50 percent pump approach where two are normally in operation and if one fails the third 50 percent takes over. Here again I could have a combination of all the three could be electrical or the no, two running normally running could be on turbo, the standby could be on electrical. So, all sorts of combinations and if I take the failure data of a turbo driven pump and electrical driven pump and then compare. I can get which is better both have a certain probability of failure, but which has a lesser probability or lesser probability of failure, it has got a lesser risk. So, this PSA is really a very very useful tool even at the design stage. So, it gives you a comparative consideration between different solution and really it gives you a real homogeneous reactor overview. We have talked about the reliability of the equipments. So, we thought we said okay, depending on the reliability of the equipment you have can have failure if the reliability is not good you can have more frequent failures. In all this malfunctions could be caused because of the component failure or equipment failure, it could also be human errors. So, human reliability also needs to be looked into when you analyze the probabilistic safety. So, one of the most important things we look in the human or the man machine interaction that any set of rules or procedures need to consider how the human can approach let us say the panel whether the switches he can operate are easy to operate or for a certain op important operations he does not have to move from one panel to the other all sorts of things have to be thought of to make the errors less in case of human beings. But here again the human behavior individual's human behavior differs. We do give training so that how the operator has to react in different situations it has, but then there is always an uncertainty. So, in the safety analysis we do consider operator errors, but as I mentioned some time back we have seen that in many events the operator has acted in a way 
which is really commendable understanding the reactor operations, uh, reactor design and have been able to prevent many accidents. So, we will even though the human error is there. So, in all the designs we do not take credit for at least for 30 minutes for human intervention. So, how do we consider the probabilistic or how do we go about the probabilistic analysis? Here we talk about event trees and fault trees. Now, what is an event tree for a similar type of faults or initiating events? We see what is the consequence on the plant or what is the core damage frequency and in the fault tree for a single system to fail what is the probability that single system can fail. So, that is the fault tree. So, you know what is the event which will happen and a set of events lead to the event tree finally, the core damage frequency. So, let us look at first at the fall tree. If I have to define fall tree, it is an analytical technique where an undesired state of the system is specified and the system is analyzed to find out all credible ways in which that undesirable state can happen or undesirable event may happen. In this case of reactor let us say a yeah, trip of a reactor pump. So, in all ways in which all ways it can happen. So, it is something like a graphical approach we make the sequential combinations or different things which both can happen mean two sorts of events, combination of events all sorts of things uh, combination of failures which can happen which can lead to the particular event. So, the fault can be a component failure or a human error or anything. So, this is actually a logical interrelationship between the different component functions and human actions. So, effectively it is a backward looking you have put the pump trip at the thing at the end it can happen because power power is not there or the pump bearing is not working. So, okay. if the pump bearing is not working okay, maybe the oil is not there for the cooling or some other problem. If the power supply is not there maybe the switch is not closed or there is a power supply is not. So, like this we develop the backward sort of. So, the end result is the analysis starting point and we go down traced back and of course, we have logic symbols because two th faults happening together can lead or each individual fault this or that also can lead. So, we have logic gates or gate and gate and things like that. We will look at a simple fault tree for this this is a motor which is running on a battery and this is a switch and our event is we want to start the motor we have closed the switch, but motor does not start. So, if the motor starts there is no event motor does not start is an event. So, the motor may not start because of two reasons one the EMF has come, but the motor does not start EMF is there motor does not start. Another case could be no EMF either of these two can happen. If this is happening means there is a problem internal to the motor whereas, if it is no EMF means there is the problem is external to the motor. Okay, when 
the motor will not get emf there could be two situations the battery is not charged so there is no emf in the battery or the wire from the battery to the motor is open the connection is not there so now let us come if the connection is open you can't do there is no going be up below coming to the no emf from battery it can happen when it can happen under two conditions the battery is not having emf and no charge is coming to the battery because the battery would be charged by some other source so no then why it is not charging maybe the wire from the switch to the battery has failed it is open or no emf from the charging source and no emf of the charging source can happen if the switch has not connected or again the wire so like this we develop and we look at combination of these or that and things can happen by which it leads to the final fault one thing we should keep in mind that fault tree is not a model for all possible system failures it is tailored to the top event you you postulate an event and find out in what way it can happen so you have to postulate certain events so it very much depends on your ingenuity how how do you postulate so it these are the it's a very very uh, endless list so you need to have a knowledge of the plant you need to have the knowledge of the experience which the other plants have had and it also needs to know what sort of failures can take place so when you are talking we are talking about the credible faults most likely happen so we need to have we have very good understanding of the system and its operation and also the operation of the components let us come to the event as now we have seen how the which faults have led to the event and which set of events can lead to a core damage so this is an accident sequence consisting of different events and the failure or the success of at every st step will tell you whether the core will get damaged or what is the probability with which the core will get damaged let us look here this is an event related to a large break loca loss of loss of coolant accident that means there is a big break so the large amount of coolant is getting lost then what is the safety function you must have the reactor protection system which must shut down okay let us say the reactor protection shuts down then the coolant is getting lost from the core so you need to provide emergency core cooling let us say emergency core cooling comes then the core may not get damaged okay so there is a certain core damage probability for this the core may not get damaged but suppose here the emergency core cooling system doesn't come we have provided into the design that the moderator will cool so if that is there again we will have now the probability with this can happen will be different because this includes the probability of a eccs failing on demand in case your failure is there of the mcs then it will lead to a certain frequency of core damage if the reactor protection system does fails then you have a certain event certain frequency of core damage so this way depending on the failure 
probability of each and every uh, system which is following in sequence we will find out the core damage frequency. So, basically here it is very important chronological order of the safety function, the safety systems and operator actions if any need to be brought in. Then we find out the core damage frequency. Another event tree involves a loss of offside power. Offside power is the power which you get outside the site. Any power plant, whether it is a conventional thermal power plant or a nuclear power plant, always is connected to the grid, power grid through different lines. So, that always in case you do not generate you will get power from outside to at least maintain the state of the plant or in case you can to, you can this grid connection would be able you can be able to send power to the grid through different lines. And in case there is a loss of offside power normally in case there is a even though in spite of multiple things you have a loss of offside power you now then go for the on site power on site power is your diesel generator. And this diesel generator will not have a very large capacity. So, it will not be in a position to run the main pumps because that requires a higher voltage and a higher power. So, we try to shut down the plant and then try to give feed water through the auxiliary pumps. So, here we consider the case of loss of offside power. Let us say the power supply does not come. If it is if it comes well and good no no probability it, it comes back cooling is assured no problem. Let us say it fails with a sudden probability. So, the next step is auxiliary feed water has to come if it comes okay no problem core is safe, but then if the auxiliary thing does not feed water does not come your cooling of the core will not be possible then you have the core melting. So, here what is the probability of this core melting happening based on the transient occurring as, as 0.2 per year and 10 to of minus 1 for the failure of the I mean so non resumption of the power or either or getting it from the diesels, then the failure of the auxiliary boil feed pump all those things together can lead to this probability. Now, all these calculations are done by Boolean algebra and you do have computer codes in fact, prepared by the or developed by the different countries and also now distributed freely by the international atomic energy agencies they train you. So, there is something like a cooperation actually nuclear arena is one where there is very good cooperation among the countries and we have a forum for cooperation unlike many other industries and energy sources. Now, when we looked at the fault tree and the event tree we are trying to calculate the probability with which it can happen. So, the probability of the individual failures is a very very important data. Now, let us say I use a company A motor, then I must use the data of the company A motor that failure data. We will see if it is available or generate that data by running the component in some rigs we can generate or we can see where that component has been used and find out what is the failure rate. In case it is not available something of a similar design we can see. So, we get starting point. Now, getting this data 
will surely be better than not using any data and these data are generally available for us here i am just giving you a very long list of some of the data which are available like transient loss of dc bus transient loss of ac bus is 5 into 10 to minus 3 per year transient loss of offset power is about 0.1 per year then sudden or uh, unexpected opening of a relief valve could be 10 to minus 4 per year then emergency diesel fail to start and there are different things fail to start on demand then failure to operate on demand there are two things it may start but may not operate so these are different types of frequencies data is available now i can tell you this failure data has been collected over a large number of reactors and many countries have established data banks right from the beginning as i mentioned all these are available on record how many times the pump have failed everything is recorded in the nuclear systems and shared with the atomic energy agency and we know how many times it has happened every event for example let me take the case of the prototype fast builder reactor 500 megawatt electrical prototype fast builder reactor which is coming up at kalpakkam in india we identified the different design basis events we took the failure data of different plants in fact we had we could get how many sort of events trips have happened in different reactors we also had experience of our own fast builder test reactor plant we had the experience of the nuclear heavy water reactors so based on this we could arrive at a very very important input for the design how many events of each type type of event which can happen and how many such events can happen in the lifetime of the plant mind you the number of times it can happen is very important for to me for the design of a component let us take a mechanical structure from shutdown i go to a operation it goes from a low temperature to a high temperature it goes from a low pressure to a high pressure then i shut down it comes down again to the low value again is start up it goes up it comes down there is a transient there is a variation of temperature every time these temperatures and pressures change the structure is getting loaded in a cyclic fashion sometimes there is a tensile stress sometimes there is a compressive stress and there is a fatigue life of the structure more the number of cycles your life can come down for a particular or you must use a material which can withstand the required number of fatigue cycles so mind you this is a very very important input for the design i repeat even though the failure data or the component failure data which leads to the event frequency may not be very very accurate nevertheless it tells you the direction in which you need to go about and the deterministic analysis combined with the probabilistic safety analysis yields a very good insight into the reactor systems and gives you on what basis you can 
make it more safe. Let me now summarize what all we have talked in these two lectures. We identified the PIEs, we identified the different design basis events, then we classified them based on the frequency, we looked at a deterministic safety analysis, then we looked at a what a probabilistic safety analysis looks like. I was able to give you some simple examples of an even tree or a fault tree, how it is developed and how we can quantify the risk is what is explained to you and I hope you have seen what are the safety principles and how we in this safety approach, how we take care of that. Thank you.